Hello everybody and welcome back to the West Coast. So it's been a few weeks since the previous episode and the reason why is obviously because of Platinum Edition and me wanting to get loads of videos of that out because uh, I know that a lot of people enjoy that series as well. But as I have been absolutely bombarded by people requesting to have another episode of the West Coast now, I can't really refuse. I was going to bring it back anyway, but it was actually going to restart on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but yeah, doesn't really matter. Here we are. Back at the West Coast, and as you can see, every single field of ours has been fertilised. We've been pretty busy. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's cost a bit of money as well, but it's it's going to be worth it. There is one field which needs to be harvested first of all. I'm just going to tap through the machinery first. Okay, there we are. Right, so we're in the John Deere tractor. What we're going to do first of all is go down to the store, because we've got a very nice brand new trailer, which we're going to go and pick up. Now this is by CD Models, I've been trying to do a showcase of this for the past two days but other things have got in the way unfortunately because I really did I really did want to do a showcase uh, but instead I'm having to incorporate it into this video uh, but it's going to be the highlight of the video, definitely so we're going to try and focus on it as much as possible it is a 16 ton grain trailer but it can also be used for silage as well there is also a lot of different configuration options as well, which I'll show you in a second when we actually get to the store, but I have already purchased it. Um, because, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm like. It does take me a while to choose the different options, and I think if I'd done it in the video, it would have taken a few minutes just for me to choose whether or not we wanted to have air brakes or flotation tyres or all that kind of stuff. So, yes, I have decided now, and I'll show you the one I chose. Okay, here we are the shop. Right, so there it is. Let me just go and hitch onto it. We do still have the manual attached going, so we're going to have to jump out the tractor to be able to actually uh, hitch it onto the back. So obviously we have to plug the hoses in ourselves, but hitching onto the trailer would usually be done from in the cab. Well, certainly for a trailer like this, not necessarily for every trailer. So there it is, the Heron 16 Fast Tow. And I have decided to go with the flotation road tyres, you can actually have some thinner ones as well. And this is the one with the air brakes, and if I just go into the store, I'll show you the configuration page. Right, so there you go, we've got four different ones you can choose from. Uh, we've got obviously two red ones and two black ones. One is a silage trailer, the other one is just a standard bulk carrier uh, grain trailer. This is the one we've just chosen, and yeah, you can have standard road tyres, flotation road, twin implement or twin radial. Um, I don't actually know what they all are. I'd have to buy them all at some point. Uh, but yeah, we've gone with the flotation road. I also went with the, the grey rim colour, sort of the white. You can also have without a front panel, add a front panel, without air brakes or with air brakes. And of course I have chosen the with air brakes option. Oh, there's also add air brakes and the front panel. Yes, I'm, I don't know what the front panel is. Mm, this is why I like to do the showcase videos. Well, maybe if I do have time as well, I'll do the showcase as well, but oh, I don't know. It just depends if I've got time, because uh, I've got to do a Farmer's Dynasty video as well. Uh, but we'll see. If not today, then maybe in a few days' time. But yes, a big thank you to CD Models for providing me with this mod. Obviously, it is going to be available at some point, but at the moment it is still work in progress. Uh, so, yes, let's just go up to field number 10. That is the first field we're going to be harvesting. In fact, it's the only field which is ripe. Uh, but yeah, we have been waiting for quite some time to be able to get these fields ready for harvest and so that we can actually get some decent money in. We're actually finishing the series at around episode 40, but we might be continuing in multiplayer, as I have mentioned before. Uh, I did actually mention it before, and many, many people actually did say, yeah, that's a great idea, we will continue it in multiplayer, so we will. Um, I think it would work quite well, although as we said before, we would have to have around 14 vehicles in total for everybody to be able to do something. So the map itself would be the same, the save game would all be the same, possibly seasons would be removed, and of course there would be quite a bit more machinery. Uh, but that is the only difference. All of the fields, all the status of the fields would be the same, and well, the money would be the same as well. Right, so I'm just going to go into this field here. If I just pull in and then go to the right, I don't really want to crush these crops. It's going to be tough not to. There we go. I'll go quite a long way down here because there is a chance we're going to have to bring the entire combine in as well to actually fit the header. Unless the header fits through the gate, 
Which, oh, it would do actually. Yeah, we probably can, we could probably fit it in here and drive it through. There is the header and the combine itself I have lost. How can you lose a combine? It's been a while. How long has it actually been? About two and a half weeks since we did the previous episode? Wow, I actually have, it must be in here. Must be. No, okay, that's not good. What about in here? Oh, great. This is embarrassing. What are we going to tell the boss? For those of you with very good memories, yes, it is inside the workshop. So if you said it was in the workshop, well done. Unless, of course, you only watched the previous video about half an hour ago, in which case you'd already know that. So I'll pull the trailer out and put it somewhere in the middle of the yard. We may have to move the sprayer, just because, uh, yeah, there's not enough space to manoeuvre. So we hitch that onto there, jump back into the combine, and somewhere, maybe here, we can attach the header. Yeah, the header actually isn't that big. In fact, the combine itself, although it's a, a good size, it isn't gigantic. You can obviously get much larger. But I think it's perfectly big enough for the farm we've got here. We have expanded considerably since the beginning, so... Yeah, at some point we'd have to change the combine again, but... When we continue in episode 41, uh, the, the chances are we're going to have a bigger combine anyway. And probably quite a few, with it being multiplayer. So this is perfect for this harvest, and this is going to this is going to be here for a few more episodes, doing every field which is currently growing. In multiplayer, I should think the first job will be to replant all the fields. And actually thinking about it, maybe I will keep seasons running, just because it is a very good mod, and we could do some snow plowing or something as a team. Oh, look at that. Not the ideal situation to be in. Right, so let's unfold things and we'll get things started up. Oh yes, don't forget the PTO shaft. Now we are going to bail, I think. I think that would be a wise idea. Set that, set this as well. And off we go. The first field to harvest of this season. Of this year, in fact. Yeah, I don't know what year this is supposed to be, because obviously we've already done one year already, so uh, maybe we could say that the previous year was 2016, this is 17, or maybe 15, 16, and then 17 is the multiplayer series. I don't know, I suppose it doesn't really matter, it's just for role playing purposes, it can be quite nice to know exactly what year you're in. We should get quite a few bales out of this as well. That field there, that is our field, actually that must be ready. Although, I don't remember it being ready. No, it is. it looks ready if you look at it in person, but obviously it's going to take another day to be fully right. But I'm really hoping this is going to please a lot of people, because the amount of people who have actually commented in my Platinum Edition video saying, Oh, come on, more West Coast. We need more West Coast. So here it is. I've actually had a really good idea. We could do the Straw Harvest add-on in this video uh, we could start to create pellets and you'd actually do you, I don't know, you might be able to sell the pellets directly from a trailer obviously in the video we were getting all palletized and getting them all into sacks but yeah I think you might be able to sell it straight from the trailer probably from a different price from a much different price um, but no you should be able to do it in fact Oh no, I don't have it enabled. If I had it enabled, then we should be able to see exactly what the price currently is at each place. Um, but no, I think we, we probably should enable it in a minute or two, and then get the Crone 5000, just to, uh, yeah, to start pelletizing, not palletizing, pelletizing the straw. It's certainly a different approach, and it's an approach which I really do like. Now the, the Crone 5000 is um, actually pretty hard to run. It requires a lot of horsepower. Uh, so we do have the John Deere or the Challenger. I think the Challenger would be a little bit extreme. Uh, plus, I, well, I don't tend to run things with PTOs on the Challenger, but I think you can do. I think they do have PTO shafts or PTO um, capabilities. But I think, yeah, the John Deere is uh, most likely going to be the best option for this, so 
we'll get the John Deere, which is already here. And I suppose we could get away with putting the New Holland on the trailer. Or we could just keep swapping over. It's not ideal, but it is another way of doing it. Now, we're almost full. Can we get back to the trailer? It's going to be close. Looks like we might be able to. Hopefully we can. Once we've done two or three headlands, we'll set it off on a worker while we sort stuff out. And it's going to have to be leased, obviously, because it's really expensive. But we should be able to make a fortune, really, from these pallets. They're not exactly cheap. If you were to sell them, and you have a lot of them, which you do get, then you would be rich in no time. So it could be a really good way of actually uh, becoming very profitable on this farm. Right. Off we go. Yeah, another good thing is, because we've got the new trailer, and we still have the other trailer as well, uh, we can still use one trailer for the grain and one trailer for the pellets. I actually think that the bigger trailer, the 16 ton heron behind us, is going to have to be the one for the pellets, just because the amount of pellets you get over the amount of grain you get is just astronomical. As you'll have seen from my first video if you've watched it, um, on the straw harvest add-on, the amount of pellets we got from just a very small section of the field was just amazing. Really amazing, there's no other word for it. So from this field, a fully fertilised field, because the other field wasn't even fertilised, it should just be astronomically amazing, <laughs> if, if that's a good way of putting it. Okay, so we're back up here again, we're almost full. Uh, in fact this time we've got just as much as the previous time. This is one profitable crop, very productive. Uh, right, so we need to cut across here once or twice more, and then we should be able to set off on a worker. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll be done with the harvesting because the worker can take over. And then we'll be just doing the fantastic pelletizing of the straw. Right, well we're full and I've just actually leased the machine, the Primos 5000. So we're going to have to go and pick that up, uh, which means possibly taking the challenges to tow it back. And then we can begin. Uh, obviously the money produced from this grain is going to really fund it. Here it comes. You know what, actually we might be able to run off the Challenger. It's definitely got PTO capabilities. So yeah, it could be it could be quite a fun setup. Now the price of wheat is actually down at the moment, so I'm only going to sell the one load. Then after that we're going to put it all into storage. We'll put it all into storage and just sell it all in one go later. Uh, even if it does mean leasing a bigger trailer or something, it will still bring in more money than if we sold it all at a bad rate. Because honestly, at the moment, the price is pretty horrific. Uh, now, actually, you know the pellets? We've got uh, the capability of uh, producing hay pellets and also straw pellets. The hay is worth a lot more, but it takes a lot of work to actually produce the hay, first of all, because it needs to be dried out and everything. So I think we, we are going to do some hay pellets, but really, I think most of it is going to be straw. Here's a closer view of the trailer very nice indeed. I really do like the flotation tyres. This will be a good test for all the lights on the back. Yep, they're all working very nicely. And here we are. We are 28 tonnes I think. Yep, everything together is 28 tonnes. So let's get it sold. Obviously it won't be 28 tonnes of grain, that's our train weight, uh, but it should still be fairly impressive, despite the price being bad. If we can hit 32,000-ish, that would be brilliant. Now uh, the price is to, I mean the currency is to uh, dollars. I've still already set to dollars, which I really shouldn't do. This is the UK. Let me change. Right, so there we go. So Great British Pounds we're back into, uh, which is a bit more fitting for the area. But there's only one job to do now, and that is to go to the store to pick up the Primos 5000. And here we are over at the store to pick up the uh, the pellet production machine. Right, that should be close enough hopefully. Or maybe a bit too close, <laughs> I'm not too sure. There we go, fantastic. Uh, we'll actually, PTO shop, I was going to say we'll attach it later, but... Yeah, there we go, fantastic. Right, so, the combine isn't actually moving at the moment. I didn't really want it to continue without me being there, as it would have likely filled up 
and then just sat there waiting for a trailer, costing us money. Uh, so we can now continue when we get back to the field. And looking at it, that actually doesn't look too strange. I think that's going to be perfectly good enough because we just need the pack. We really do need the horsepower. That is what this machine needs the most of. It doesn't want speed. It just wants a lot of power. It also doesn't need traction. But we've got the traction anyway. Okay, this is the turning. It's a bit tight. Right at the bottom of the hill. And there's our other trailer. Which I think has got some manure in it. But it shouldn't matter too much. We just tip it out. Uh, yeah, that is another thing we need to do as well at some point to the orchard. We need to reduce the price of the trees so we can buy quite a few. But first, we need to make the money. And this is where we make the money. I hope. So, yeah, there we go. Fantastic. We'll jump into the Matty Ferguson just to get it moving again on a worker. And we'll come back to it later. It actually does need a service. It does keep stopping. I think I'll set it off about here, because obviously there's a bit of a curve. I don't want it to stop halfway down. And then this trailer is for the pellets, and then the other trailer is for the grain. Okay, let's see how it goes. I'm hoping pretty well. We'll soon find out. How quickly is it going to fill up? Yeah, pretty quickly. The headlands are always the most difficult part because obviously we need to turn. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting seeing it's on a Challenger, but I don't think it is totally absurd. I, I think it's okay. Probably not your ideal machine for it. But at least we are providing the decent power. Let's see a rocket up here. There's a great mound of straw. Hmm, yeah, it went up a bit faster. Well, all I can say is hopefully we get back to the trailer. Uh, it would be best to keep unloading every single time we go around. Uh, obviously we're only going around twice, then after that it will be up and down the field, so it would be much easier to uh, keep on top of it, and not risk overflowing, or just being full. Uh, but yeah, the, there are the pellets going into there. And with this machine, we're actually uh, getting a good deal. The dealer has thrown in water and molasses as just an infinite supply because it was so much cheaper that way. This is when you require the most horsepower. Powering it and also pulling uphill. Even with the Challenger, we have dropped three miles per hour. That's amazing. So, in some respects then you could say that this is actually not powerful enough, or it isn't quite enough for what it could have, what it should have, which is hard to believe because this is one of the the biggest challenge. I think this is probably the smallest in the larger range of challenges. So it's still pretty big. It's the MT845E, I think. Or F. It's dirty. E, I think. But yeah, that is not exactly a small tractor, is it? I think. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't really be struggling there. We're picking up speed again now. Oh, no, no, wait. We're back at three. Well, we should pick up speed again. Oh, why has the combine gone over there? Bear with me. Okay, that's back on track. I hope. Now I can go back over to the Challenger to continue. 86% full. And we've gone about halfway. We're going to have to bring the trailer over to the Challenger, I think. I'll put the conveyor belt out. Thankfully, it's on this side, not the hedge side. That is a very easy... 7,500 litres. Very easy. Well, I'll switch it off, and where's the trailer from here? There it is. Yep, it's a nice looking trailer. Gotta say. Perfect for this job. Oh, now is that going to be uh, 
Yeah, yeah, close. Not enough clearance for the beacon. I'm hoping we can get a few loads into here. With it being a 16 ton trailer. Maybe two loads. If this fills at 50% that would be just perfect. And while it's doing that, if I just check on here. Uh, yeah, the price is going up over at Quality Timber. So that should be a good price soon. 45%. Uh, Fantastic. No doubt we're going to have to drive the trailer back over to it again though. Let's go for another round. It's all because it's fertilised. It's obviously making a lot more pellets than what it would do had it not been fertilised at all. I think it might have been ploughed as well, so it should be 100% extra productivity. The combine is full, so here is the trailer for it. Actually there was no manure in it, which is very nice, because obviously if there was manure in it then it would have been a bit dungy. Dungy grain. And yes, I, I should think the farm would have not really been in the good books for doing that. So yes, it, it's nice that it has been cleaned. Uh, so yes, we'll continue with that in a second. Oh no, this tractor's broken down too. Every machine needs a service. Should have done it in the winter. Oh dear. Come on, come on tractor, you can do it. You can make it. Well, it doesn't have to go very far. It just has to stay in this field. I am pleased though that we have two trailers because one trailer really isn't enough. There we go. As you'll probably know, the leasing fee is also hourly, so if we were to use this machine for an hour, it would cost us $11,000 or pounds extra, uh, which isn't exactly cheap. So I think if we can just cram in as much as we can do within the first hour, which actually should be the entire field, then the profit from doing this should be huge. Especially if the price has gone up. Keep going, almost full. I'll put the conveyor belt out ready. There we go. The space in the trailer for just a tiny bit more. It's 91% full. So it's got two full loads so far. I think the best thing to do is probably just go to the top of here, then come back down again, unload, and then sell. Because I really want to see if we can sell everything just at a normal sell point. I think we should be able to because in the add-on it is a placeable sell point that you can put anywhere. That is designed if you want to sell the pallets of pellets which you've just created uh, the 20 kilogram sacks for. Um, but yeah, I think you can just sell straight out of the trailer which would be very nice indeed. 22% full already. We've, we've literally just unloaded. It's amazing. I just wish we had a bigger trailer. Can you imagine if we had quite a few of these running? We would be absolutely flooded with pellets it would just be a huge money-making day I guess we could do it at some point when the add-on has been released sorry I'm not trying to rub it in it's just uh, yeah obviously it's not out yet this is the beta version it's actually a bit thin on the ground here I think this was where the combine <laughs> drove up on its own a minutes to go it keeps stopping. It, uh, everything needs to be serviced. I think what we'll do before we start in the next episode is I'll run around every machine with the toolbox, give it a service and make sure everything is going to be fine because I don't want any more breakdowns. So far I think every machine except for the Challenger is broken down today so yeah it needs to be done. It's going to be expensive but it's better than just having machines stopping for no reason. Well there's obviously a reason it's just uh, yeah the main reason is because I haven't serviced them. So we are 55% full virtually, there we go. We'll unload into the trailer. And then it'll be time to sell. But today was just like a setting up day and a brainwave day. I didn't even think of doing this before I started. I was literally going to just do some harvesting, which would have been a bit dull. There we go. Right into the John Deere 16 and a half thousand litres and I think we agreed the timber place was the best place has it changed? 
Let's just go to the end here. Yep, there we go. Nine five four. Perfect. Uh, one four five six for hay for the hay pellets. They are worth a lot. Uh, so yes, quality timber. That's somewhere down here. In fact, that is a very long way from here. So having a bigger trailer would be fantastic. Off we go. Let's see what we can make. It actually isn't going to be that impressive for this first load. When we start doing some hay pellets, it's going to be just amazing. Really good. But despite it being a 60,500 litre trailer, it's still perfectly big enough for most of the jobs we're doing. It's obviously a very nice trailer, very well made, and uh, a huge upgrade from some of the ones we've had in the past. Basically, the quality timber depot, or yard, is beyond where we went before, at the beginning of the video. So, yes, if you were to do this again, I think you'd probably choose a field closer to the sell point, or you just uh, do it as pallets, or there is another option as well, uh, you just get a, a great big bulk load, sorry I've just clipped your car, uh, yeah you get a bulk, bulk tipper and sell a huge amount in one go. This is where we went to before, but we're going left from here, up the dual carriageway, better stay in the lane because we'd like to be overtaken and yeah I think we have to actually go round and back up because where is it hang on um, yes it's probably uh, yeah next turning I'm gonna have to come off out of thought is anybody trying to overtake kind of hogging two lanes here Right, so we're going to come off here. And then it should loop back around, I would hope. Yep. Turn right here. Is that it? It is. Have I gone... I've turned off too early, haven't I? Here we are, right, this is the test then. That is for wooden timber. There likely won't be a place to sell pellets. I'm looking forward to seeing this though. Maybe maps have to be set up for it. I don't know. Obviously I'm just testing things out here. Oh, hang on, no, wait, it's selling it's selling at wood chips. Interesting. Is it being sold as a wood chip though? You wouldn't have thought so. No, I don't think it is doing. No, because, yeah, if it was a wood chip, it would be a terrible price. So that is very interesting indeed. We have sold some pellets directly to the timber merchant, which I think is quite an achievement, because before, um, I was very confused as to whether we should palletize them first. But that has worked perfectly well. So, with that good news, I think we're going to leave it there. We'll continue tomorrow or the next day. And we'll be doing a very similar thing. But with m machines which have been repaired and all fully working and everything. So until then, thank you for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.